Thanks to Lockheed Martin for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey, I'm Diana and you're watching Physics Girl. Ever tried bouncing Tic Tacs into a cup? Bouncing Tic Tacs into a cup is hard. Some might say strangely hard. See, I was in the best state the other day to come across an everyday mystery when I noticed something strange. Sometimes Tic Tacs bounce higher on the second bounce than on the first. What? If you've ever bounced any round ball ever, you know that the first bounce is always higher than the second bounce. What is going on with the Tic Tacs? We're gonna solve the mystery with any clues we can pick up. Like, Tic Tacs aren't shaped like round balls, so maybe it's the shape of the Tic Tac that makes it bounce like that. And then try to accomplish a challenge. Today's mystery challenge is this. Try and make the Tic Tac bounce to a height higher than we dropped it from. If you like physics like I do, that should make you raise an eyebrow. So, the Tic Tac mystery. I have a theory of what's going on, but I can't give it away yet because I don't want the culprit to escape. But to verify it, we need to film dozens of Tic Tac drops with a fandom high speed camera at a thousand frames per second. It's for science. I love this footage. Thanks so much to my friends Darren and Joe and Todd, I got really good footage of the Tic Tacs bouncing higher. But that's the next clue. I didn't get any bad footage, because it takes five minutes to save one second of footage on the phantom camera. But that's a hint to the clue. The clue is that the Tic Tac does not always bounce higher on the second bounce. In fact, if you drop it straight up and down, it kind of just bounces like a normal ball. That's another clue. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Write it down, Watson. You know, like the computer. So, something's happening that doesn't happen all the time. I think it's time to show you the high-speed footage, but you're gonna get some really, really good clues from this. Here it goes. It's so obvious now. When there's a low bounce on the Tic Tac, it starts rotating really quickly. Have you solved it? Putting it all together, the shape of the Tic Tac must come into play. Because the elongated shape of the Tic Tac, you can get the Tic Tac to start spinning. It happens when the Tic Tac hits the table on one side first, creating a torque across the Tic Tac that starts it spinning. Like a torque starts a lot of things spinning. That's why it's important for the Tic Tac not to be falling straight up and down, because you can't get a torque if you're pushing perpendicular to this axis. Nope, still can't. And then you notice that the next time the Tic Tac hits, it stops spinning and that's when it bounces higher again. This is where it gets conservational. We have to follow the energy because energy is always conserved. The amount of energy we start out with when you drop a ball is our potential energy coming from the fact that it's starting out at some height in Earth's gravity field. And then as the ball falls, it loses its potential energy and gains kinetic energy, and energy is always conserved. So then why doesn't the ball come back up to the same height? Ah, well, some energy went into heat when it hit the table. So you'll never get higher than the original height when you drop a ball. And same with the Tic Tac. But we are getting higher than a previous bounce. Let's follow the energy. When the Tic Tac starts spinning, some of its energy goes into rotational kinetic energy, which means it has less energy that can go from that translational kinetic energy, the energy of just moving in a straight line, into potential energy to bring the Tic Tac back up. So it can't go as high, because that energy is in the rotational energy. So the Tic Tac can't have it for potential energy. There it is. And then when the Tic Tac unspins, <laughs> when it stops rotating by bouncing again, that rotational energy is available again to allow the Tic Tac to go higher. Mystery solved. And now, on to the challenge. Welcome back to my boredom palace. <laughs> That's what I like to call my bedroom. I was supposed to be talking about a challenge. The challenge that I set out at the beginning of this video was, you remember? To get the Tic Tac to bounce to a higher height than I dropped it from. I'm just waiting to see whether you wanted to think of a way to do that before I gave it away. We learned that when the Tic Tac has some spin, it has extra energy. So my idea is to impart a little bit of spin when I drop the Tic Tac, then it'll have extra rotational energy. So once it bounces, it can turn that rotational energy into more just translational kinetic energy and get up higher than where I dropped it. Spoiler alert, I've actually already been doing this for 10 minutes and I had, <laughs> I had to remove the bottom part of my sweatsuit because I got so sweaty <laughs> dropping Tic Tacs. Mm, get you a friend who puts so much effort into her Tic Tac experiments, she makes this face. 
I shouldn't be left alone in a room. But okay, it totally worked. Now, some of you are thinking, how do you know that I didn't actually give it some downward velocity, which is kind of cheating. Like it's already got some more kinetic energy and it's not just the rotational energy. I'm not dropping it. I'm actually throwing it downward. And that's a legitimate concern. And since I anticipated it already, I have a way of addressing your concern. I don't think it's cheating if I give it a little upward velocity in addition to the spin. And then we try and see whether I can match the top part of the trajectory. Now I'm gonna gauge whether I can drop it back up to that peak. Uh, it was a little harder to do. They're so orange. Orange, you glad I'm doing this for 30 minutes and not you? <laughs> Sorry. Just keep trying. We did it! Woo! Challenge accomplished. Now, if you have any other ideas for how you could win that challenge, let me know down in the comments. But I think we did pretty darn good. Thank you so much for watching and happy physicsing. Couple more things. If there are any everyday mysteries that you wonder about as you go through life, tell me about them in the comments. In fact, this video was inspired by Kelly O'Shea on Twitter who told me about this Tic Tac phenomenon. So if there's anything you wanna see a video about, tell me about it in the comments. And lastly, I would like to thank Lockheed Martin for supporting PBS Digital Studios. We depend on GPS. GPS has allowed us to be found by first responders, to get lost and rerouted within seconds, and to find the nearest shops that serve Hawaiian style food. I miss home. GPS has made our lives easier, and Lockheed Martin's GPS-3 satellites are making GPS even better with more accuracy and a compatible signal with international navigation satellites. GPS satellites provide connectivity for faster and more precise navigation worldwide. Visit Lockheed Martin's website and watch production of GPS-3 and how this technology can improve your daily life.